Hey, it's Sophia and Sydney, and today we're going to be showing you how to make knockoff Jeopardy or Jeopardy. So the problem we found was that studying sucks. It's boring and causes us to procrastinate and do poorly on exams. So we set off to fix this problem by gamifying studying through Jeopardy, a text-based program that uses a game board to ask questions of various difficulties and gives the user points when they answer correctly. Initially, our program created a game board showing the five categories and five difficulty levels using a 5x5 five five integer matrix. Then, it stored our questions and answer data in a 3D list, or five level list, that goes inside a category list, which is repeated five times to be placed inside another list that represents all questions in the program, which is then repeated again to make the answer list. And finally, it outputted one of three questions from a user chosen topic and level for the user to answer and tells them if they got it right or wrong. While this program worked and it had some nice upgrades like thinking about a level being chosen multiple times, the code was messy, basic, hard to remember which questions were done previously since the game board never changed. So that's what we set out to improve in version one. So in our version one, we factorized and vectorized our code to make it more organized, and we added a score counter using a variable called money so the user could keep track of how well they're doing. We also looped the ability to answer questions for the entire board so it can go through all 25 questions. We added a final Jeopardy round function that allows you to bet money up to the amount that you have. We added a section menu to make it look more like an actual game, and we changed the game board from an integer matrix to a string matrix using D type equals U10, since it allowed us to change a row column entry to an empty string once we found out the value. This was a major improvement in terms of readability and efficiency, but our program was still lacking. We realized that the question answer arrays kind of sucked. It was efficient and hard to modify, making it super difficult for a user to use it as an actual studying tool. Also, we realized our game wasn't really user-friendly. While the randomized level questions were fun, they were kind of pointless. They don't help the user master specific questions, and the user would have to enter 75 different questions in order for the program to run. To simplify how we stored the questions and answers, we started looking at how we could use a text file to store data as tuples, which we could then extract as needed. But it was hard. We knew there had to be a more efficient method, so we searched, which led us to use a JSON file instead. A JSON file is a type of file that stores the data as dictionaries, which is perfect for question answer based games like ours. So using this video, I learned how to convert an Excel spreadsheet to a JSON file by importing JSON and pandas and using pandas to read the spreadsheet and convert it, with each row corresponding to an object, the column headers corresponding to attribute titles, and cell values corresponding to the attributes themselves, and I also learned how to extract the specific values to use in our code. This simplified the code greatly and made it possible that anyone could use their own set of questions and answers and use it in the game Jeopardy. I also, I used OS to display the names of all Excel files in the user's directory so they can choose any file they want and don't have to name it a specific title. So I also added a function to review questions if they were marked wrong by adding the index of wrong questions to a list so the user can repeat specific questions until they're all answered correctly, allowing the user to improve their skills. While Sydney did that, I made the file more user-friendly. I used try and accept blocks, or checking against a string list of accepted values to make sure the code ran no matter what value the user entered. Also, I created the images using graphs. After watching previous submissions like Really Good Slot Machine by Clarence View, I felt inspired to incorporate graph-based elements into our program. I added a menu and a final Jeopardy screen by loading images in matplotlib and subplot and extending it to go over the entire screen. I also created a graph game board that removed values as chosen by creating another matplotlib plot, coloring it purple, putting a string list of all my headers, then iterating text on the graph with a proper category name and number representing them, and then creating the board values in I and J spots. So although there's still ways of improving our code, like making everything a graph or having an AI plugin that automatically creates questions and categories or a theme of the user's choosing, this code was something we're really happy with submitting because there's so much that we learned. First of all, it's okay to rethink our code. We need to make code with the user and goal in mind. And sometimes it means scrapping our original ideas like randomized questions for each level and adding safeguards to make the code more user friendly. We also realize that coding is a language. Although one method may work, there could be more efficient techniques out there to help us reach our end goal. Therefore, we need to be curious, search for answers, and not be scared to struggle learning something that feels unfamiliar. And that's how to make Japan. Bye! Bye.